We'll gather uh, in a moment for remarks by the foreign minister. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what an incredible turnout. Ah. Thank you so much. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Adam Lupel, IPI's Vice President, and it really is extraordinary to see you all here on this, on this beautiful evening. We don't get the chance to do too many receptions anymore, but when the Danes call, uh, we make it happen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this special reception on the occasion of the visit of His Excellency, Mr. Lars Loka Rasmussen, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Denmark. Um, it is always a pleasure to work with, with Denmark, and I, I mean that seriously, both with the mission, uh, Ambassador Lassen is here, um, and in, in capital. And we look forward to continuing that work together as Denmark prepares to join the Security Council next year. And so really, I just do want to uh, start by expressing my gratitude um, for our enduring partnership. It is sincerely appreciated. Um, and it is really great to have the foreign minister here. As many of you know, uh, he's not your average foreign minister. Um, over a long and distinguished political career, Mr. Rasmussen has served twice as prime minister, first from 2009 to 2011, and then again from 2015 to 2019. He was also previously minister for finance and minister for interior and health, and for 10 years, the chairman of the Liberal Party. He's also a distinguished author, something we value here at a think tank, um, and a thought leader. So it is a sincere honor to have him here. So please join me in welcoming Foreign Minister Rasmussen to the podium. Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. It's always nice to be here. I remember uh, my, my, my last visit. It was during the high level week uh, and it was, you know, a month before what happened in Gaza. And we had a dinner about the situation in the Middle East and Israel and the Palestine authorities. And honestly speaking, no one really paid much attention to that. And now I'm talking about journalists and the public opinion. And now uh, we are in a totally different uh, situation. Um, and that's just another reason why we are running for a seat in the Security Council. But... But first of all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for, for hosting us uh, with a very uh, short notice. Uh, thank you for attending with a short notice. Um, all of you, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, recently, and I think it was a Danish journalist asked me, is the UN uh, still uh, relevant? Um, what difference does that building behind us uh, really make. And I guess for all of us standing here today, and thank you to all of you for, for coming, the answer is quite obvious. We know that uh, UN is a relevant uh, body and we know what uh, UN has uh, accomplished. But we also know uh, that the world is uh, changing, just bearing in mind with what I just uh, mentioned, uh, our attention to Israel uh, one and a half year ago compared to today. We know that uh, we are living in challenging times and that the UN must uh, change with a changing world. And the world needs a UN that reflects the global realities of our time. Because the UN is no more and no less than its member states. The UN can only deliver if we as member states deliver. And that is precisely why Denmark is running for a seat on the UN Security Council to do our part, to offer to do our part. When the world is divided, we need to unite. When I was appointed uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, approximately uh, a year ago, I launched a new Danish foreign policy strategy 
Uh, and I did it uh, under the headline uh, Pragmatic uh, Idealism. And it could very uh, well uh, have been the tagline for our campaign to the Security Council as well. But what does that mean, pragmatic idealism? Well, uh, obviously, uh, Denmark is not a, a big nation, but a small country, medium-sized at, at, at best. We know by heart that we cannot do anything alone, that we must work with others if we want to move things forward. We will bring this knowledge into the Security Council if we are uh, elected. And we will do it with a typical Nordic pragmatic mindset that sees the world as it is and not how we want it to be and uh, works to find constructive solutions to move things forward. Being pragmatic does not mean that we are not ambitious. And I am proud to announce today Denmark's ambitious priorities for our membership. First, as an overriding principle, we will defend the UN Charter and international law. And that includes international humanitarian and human rights laws. This must be the foundation of our cooperation. Because without international law, chaos reigns and brutality rules. And of course, we can discuss how to interpret international law, but not that it must apply at all times, in all circumstances, and for all. We will push for a council that is more accountable, more effective, and more representative. The world needs a security council that reflects the global diversity of the 21st century. So the Charter and international law is our foundation. In addition, we have three thematic priorities. First of all, we need to update and expand the Security Council's crisis responses. Conflict dynamics are becoming more complex. Peacekeeping operations often find no peace to keep. In the coming years, the UN will have to deal with a number of mission transitions, in particular uh, Africa. If elected to the Security Council, Denmark will work with fellow members and regional organizations such as the African Union, to make sure that the toolbox of the Council is fit for purpose. And secondly, because we want the Council to be effective, we must make sure that it actively addresses the effects stemming from new underlying and growing challenges, in particularly, and most important, the climate change. Across the globe, climate change is um, intensifying conflicts, making land unlivable, forcing people to leave their homes, posing ex existential threats to low-lying island nations. If Denmark is elected to the Security Council, we will work with other members to make the Council address climate-related security risk. And last but not least, it would be a priority for Denmark to implement the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. Together, we have come a long way since Resolution 1325 was adopted back in year 2000, but much more needs to be done to bridge the gap between rhetoric and reality. Not only because it is the right thing to do, but also because history and experience shows that peace efforts involving women are simply more successful. Those are in short, Denmark's priorities for a seat on the Security Council for 25-26, a solid foundation for a more peaceful world, respect for international law, a more relevant council, Security Council, and hopefully these priorities will not come as a huge surprise to you. They are principles that Denmark has stood by for, for decades in this building behind me and across the globe. Uh, so I also realize, uh, because I'm a politician, that you can be campaigning and you can make a lot of promises to your voters and you can create a political platform. And then once you are elected, you have to deal with the agenda on the table. But you need to bring values uh, with you uh, when you enter the decision-making room. And we have strong values. We believe in an international 
rule-based uh, order. In closing, let me revisit my opening question. Is that building behind me still relevant? Is the Security Council still relevant? It clearly is. And I think just today is a living proof of, of, of that. And also an uh, uh, example to follow of the increased influence among the E10 uh, countries. And it gives us appetite to run and to be uh, hopefully elected. And it's not only about the building, of course. It's about the people, the people who meet in that building and the decisions they take. It has been 20 years since Denmark last held a seat on the Security Council, and we are now ready to serve again. And we are fully committed to sharing the responsibility. And of course, I hope that we can count on your support. Thank you very much. We'll keep the music back on and uh, enjoy the reception. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>